All right, welcome, welcome back under the rug. And today I am extremely excited. This is going to be a very special show for me today because I anticipate having two of the most influential people um, in my media career on the show at the same time. Um, we have my light-skinned brother from another mother, Mr. T. H. Grant, who yeah, actually uh, put me on his platform when he first had his show, uh, Coffee Break, on uh, mainstream radio. It was actually the first talk show that I was ever on. So um, uh, uh, um, you pop my radio cherry, T. H. Oh, what? <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> as far as talk shows go, uh, your show was the first talk show that I was ever on. Um, it was a good time. It was a good honor. And I think we are able to build a great relationship. Um, you're, you're one of the um, people that I hold in high regard, very intelligent, uh, very aware, uh, very conscious, and very active. And so welcome back, my brother. I had you on back in the day, but then that show get all messed up because, you know, I was in Freeport when the equipment right, was free. Right. Now the internet was arcing up. It was all kind of issues with that particular show. Hey, but so glad to have you back, my brother. Freeport, though, I ain't gonna lie. So I, I understand. <laughs> Say again. <laughs> some strange things was happening. You come free port, the way I understand. I yeah, it. man. Listen, I don't know what what went down at that particular time, but for some reason, Freeport wasn't allowing us to be great. But anyway, the show is up there for those that wanna um, um, watch it. The audio may be a bit off because the mic right. wasn't working with us properly. But if you want to go ahead and check that out, we were actually discussing, um, I think, uh, the legalization of marijuana on that show. Yeah. Um, we're gonna we're gonna revisit that again. When we can get everything operating, just like how we are right now. Right now, the audio is fine. Things are good. We can see you. We can hear you quite fine. So we'll revisit that on another day. But today, we're going to be discussing something that I saw. Well, what sparked me wanting to have this discussion is I saw a post that you made earlier. But you like I, said, I don't like to um, speak for people, and you're here right now. So why don't you go ahead and explain exactly the post that you made and what sparked you to make that post? Well, um... I was, um, I was just, I popped on Facebook and I do what I do when I have extra time, you know, time to kill. And I read through some posts and it's this guy and, you know, he, um, he's a guy that I know to be a cool guy. You know, I never had no static with him, never had no words. I don't know him to be any kind of way. So um, when I saw he was posting about using the N word, I know he's a, he's a white Bahamian, you know, and I just wondered if it was okay because he had posted it the day before. But I know a lot of black people who follow me follow him. And I was just surprised that nobody took the time to explain to him why white Bahamians using the N-word um, is not the same as black Bahamians using the N-word, number one. And number two, that using the N-word, period, is something that uh, we should eliminate from our vocabulary. Um, so I had, a, I had an issue, and I wanted to explain to him why it wasn't okay, period. But just in case he wondered why black Bahamians say it and they get away with it and white mm. Bahamians don't, I wanted to explain that as well. Mm. So tell us, what was your explanation to him as to why it's different when black Bahamians use it as opposed to white Bahamians? What was your explanation to him? Well, he had a point with, um, with the sensitivity. Um, growing up in the Bahamas, um, you know, it's a 90% black country. And um, if you're a white kid growing up here as a Bahamian, um, you're treated just like any other Bahamian, you know. Um, and sometimes black Bahamians will call you the N-word. And growing up, you would call uh, black Bahamians or white people would call the black Bahamians N-word, but innocently and ignorantly, you know. Um, so there we understand. Um, but for me, uh, if you're grown, you should know better. Number one, you should have enough knowledge of history and you should know uh what kind of legacy is attached to that word? Um, for instance, that word is attached to slavery, brutality. Um, and so they try to compare that with calling a white person hunky or cracker, which is not the same thing because hunky or cracker is not attached to those things. Um, and so I just wanted him to be clear as to uh, why the term is offensive to us and why it's not the same thing, why it's comparing apples to oranges. Interesting. And I and I and, and as we were discussing before the show, you know, we I, I'm sure we both feel multiple ways about it. Because like mm -hmm. you said, we grew up with this word. Um we're we're probably about the same age. And yeah. we came up in a culture where we use the word very loosely. And very it's no you know, it's not no uh, ill intent, you know, we're not it's not malicious, we're not trying right. to insult people or anything, it's just how we refer to others. 
You know what I mean? We have, we have, I grew up uh, with white niggas, uh, Chinese niggas, uh, you know, all kind of different. Everybody was a nigga. It's just a way to refer to a person. You understand? So I, we, we weren't or we aren't old enough to know or to experience the pain and the hurt that that word caused some people that are still living today. You know what I mean? So we were we we are detached from that actual experience. We may be knowledgeable about it by hearing it from people. You know what I mean? But we didn't right. exactly experience that. Um, well, at least not here in the Bahamas. Maybe if you travel to the United States and you go into racist towns, you may experience it. You know, to a degree. But in the Bahamas, I mean, it's, that word is thrown around very loosely. So I grew up saying it. I still, you know, say it to this day. But I have been hearing a lot of cases recently that have actually made me consider not using it. But right. as it stands right now, I personally don't have a problem with white people saying it because I don't want to be a hypocrite. You understand? Right. I don't want someone using the word and saying, oh, well, you can't use it. You understand? I don't want In what way would you be a hypocrite even if you use the word? And what, well, I would be a hypocrite because, okay, if the word is so bad, that I don't want a particular person to refer to other, uh, other people as it, then I shouldn't be using it. That's that correct. means it's a word that shouldn't be used. You yeah. understand? But if I feel it's okay to refer to another human being as this word, then why should I feel that it's a problem for someone else to refer to someone as that word? You know what I mean? I, I, I'm all about eliminating hypocrisy from my life. So my thing is, if I'm going to have a problem with someone else saying the word, then I myself would choose not to say it. That's but you just don't have a problem with somebody else saying the word. You don't. You no, don't I, have a problem I, with white people saying the word. It's, but my thing is, my thing is, it's all about context, right? Right. It's correct. all about context and intent. You know what I mean? What it is you intend for the word to, to the impact of the word to be. You understand? What context are you using it in? Right. You know what I mean? If a white person is uh, directly quoting somebody or they, like a news anchor quoting someone saying it, why should that be a problem? You report the news, you report the truth, you report the facts, and you are making a quote. If it's a white person that grew up around black people their entire lives, grew up in the hood, was using it in that kind of way, and they use it the same way we use it, why would I have a problem with that? Because clearly you're using it in the same way that we are. You understand? You're not trying to be malicious with it. So it's about it's more about context over color with me. It's not about the color, it's about the context. But if a white person uses that word and they uh, ignorantly use it and innocently use it, um, wouldn't the next step be to give them a lesson on the word and the origin of the word and why they can't use the word? Because me, I don't feel like it's hypocritical for you to use the word and then not expect for uh, white people to not use the word. However, I do believe if we stop using the word that we won't have such a problem with so many uh, white people using the word casually. Uh, mm -hmm. So I know it's a double-edged sword and I understand what you're saying, but I, I wouldn't call it hypocritical though, Greg. I mean, because I would. I... Even though I try not to use the word personally. Right. Well, see, that, see that's my thing is... My thing is, it's just straight up you being a hypocrite is if you're preaching one thing, but you live in another. You know what I mean? Right. And that's preaching, oh, you can't do this, but I could. I, I'm, I'm not down with that. You know what I mean? But and also, Being a hypocrite in this situation, though, Greg, would be if you let, um, if you let a white person you grew up with call you nigger, and then you don't let somebody, another white person, call you nigger. For me, I think but, that would be hypocritical. I don't, well, think, I don't think the other side would be hypocritical. Um, well, I mean, I well, we may we may just have the disagree <laughs> on it, because, like I say, with me is with me is it's more context over color. You know what I mean? I I don't care about the color of your skin. Um, it's more so your intent and the impact. Uh, um, or the intent of the impact. You understand? That's that's my whole thing. And another uh, dangerous thing is, um, you said earlier they can't. I don't like to use the word can't. I understand completely why white people shouldn't use it. Right. Okay. <laughs> want to use it as opposed to can't you could say whatever you want to say but yeah. understanding the history of the word and the culture that we exist in you have to understand that there are consequences for you using this word because of this culture that has now been established around this word you have to expect some repercussions and some consequences you understand um let me go ahead and I look like chrissy joining here right now oh lord why is she sideways christina chrissy <laughs> How are you? Chrissy, you laying down there. I got to look like this. <laughs> you sideways. Ah, there we go. I had there a we go. Yeah, look here. Look here. I learned. You learned a name? 
I Listen, know. Listen, I was saying earlier, this, this day is so special for me because like I explained earlier, Teach was the very first talk show that I have ever been on in my entire life. And you are the person, you know, we had our, we used to uh, do your show every Tuesday. Well, at least uh, the last Tuesday and every month. So you kind of molded me into this media personality that I'm growing to become now. So you two are the two uh, that are most responsible for me being the media person that I am right now. So this is a very special moment to have both of you on the show at the same time. It is very exciting, and I am honored to have you both here. Aww. Respect, respect. Thank you, Greg. Greg, trying to make people cry. <laughs> no, man, that's real. You know what I mean? Listen, I like to give, I give people their flowers while they're living, and I appreciate when people do certain things for you. You have to acknowledge that. I have no problem doing that. Only people with uh, self-esteem issues have an issue with acknowledging people that helped them along the way and did things for them. They want to feel like they did everything themselves. I'm not that kind of person. So I give people the respect that they uh, uh, deserve, and that's what I'm doing right now. Respect. Oh. Uh, we love you, Greg. And kudos to you for taking it even further. Say again? Kudos to you for taking it even further. Thank you so much. Now, the end word, now we were just saying, now me and Tage are around the same age. And so, you know, we all grew up saying this word, but you being, you know, way, 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 way older than us, we want, we want you to give us some, <laughs> some context as well. <laughs> Your experience growing up with this word and the impact that it had on you and your feelings on the N-word, who could use it? Should black people use it? Should white people use it? Should anyone be using it? Your thoughts on this word? Well, since I'm the way, way, way old person in the group, you know, I can't stand Gregory. I love you, but I don't like you. No, the thing is, first of all, let's acknowledge a couple of things. And this is so timely dealing with this, considering what I was dealing with on my own show um, on YouTube. I encourage everybody to go watch my show from yesterday. Mm. Yes, I will. And, um, you know, first of all, every ethnicity has slurs. Now, again, we as black folk are very sensitive about it because I don't care what anybody says. I know they say everyone had issues they dealt with, but the transatlantic slave trade and the human trafficking that we people of color had to go through was the most severe and barbaric. Not that we are in the victim Olympics, like Greg likes to say. Mm -hmm. However, the thing that I do acknowledge us black folk for is that we took this pejorative word, this nasty word, and we sort of made it our own. I don't agree with some of the ways that we use it. I use it all the time. And I believe I'm entitled to use it because I'm black. If you were a Jewish person, you could call yourself a kike. I can't say that. If you were an Irish person, you know who you are. You could call yourself a patty or a mitt or a bog. I can't say that. If you were Italian, you could call yourself a guinea or a wop. I can't say that. So only black folk could say nigger. It's that simple. I don't know what the, what the argument is about. And I don't understand why white people feel so comfortable to say it. Like the woman on my show yesterday, our friend. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, when you white, you can't say it. And, you know, unfortunately, us black people in our talent, in the rap game, in the music industry, we kind of made white folk and other gen uh, other um, ethnicities feel that they have a pass to use it because Facts. It in our lyrics. Facts. And I think sometimes people get carried away, so much so that a lot of white folk take it to the extreme. Not all, but a lot. Because I don't know, um, one of the great things about being up here with my baby boy, I hear a lot of bullshit that I don't want to hear, but it's so educational. Um, right. The actor, Tom Hanks, has a son who's a rapper, and he was in this big old thing. Yeah, I don't know. How you could be rapping when you was on the set of Turner and Pooch? Anyway, right he was in this big old <laughs> row about using the N-word in this song that's kind of popular. I can't remember his name. White jackass, privileged boy, I don't know. And so I just think that only <laughs> black folk can use that word. And people are going to call me whatever names that they call me. I admire y'all black people who don't say nigga. I will say nigga from here to thy kingdom come. <laughs> I'm always saying it on my show, you struggling niggas. Uh huh. Because niggas ain't always colored people, too. Right. So that's, what I, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. Right. So I, I personally don't see anything wrong with black people using it. It is sometime because of my history. And I will admit, I lived, the first time I heard the word nigga, that I can't remember was when I moved to the Bahamas in the 70s. All my years of growing up in Brooklyn, New York, you know, I grew up in that black power era too. And yeah. I had parents who were very much pro black power. 
And mm -hmm. so I don't remember hearing the word nigga, except maybe if I saw it in a movie or, but most of my uh, acknowledgement of the word nigga happened when I was in the Bahamas in the seventies. Mm -hmm. Everybody was using it. I have a white friend who I went to school with and, you know, I went to the whitest primary school, not that one, the other one. Mm -hmm. And I remember him saying to me, look, yeah, it's one white nigga who don't play that. And I mm -hmm. using me as in, you know, being in the Bahamas, I was like, yeah. What you mean you a white nigga who don't play that? I don't get it. So the word is laced with hate, but it's also laced with black people taking it back and saying, you know, you can call me whatever you can call me, but I know I can interpret it. Mm, and I see. Yeah, I as, and for those watching, I just want to, um, normally we are able to put the comments up on the screen, but for some reason, my program freaking out. I can't put the comments up on the screen, but I'll try to read um, some as we go along. And um, Chrissy, based on what you say just now, Barry Eric McKinney says, this is why context matters. What Chrissy just did would be deemed racist by some. Now, Barry, I can tell you what Chrissy can say right now. Chrissy, black and you, they, they stick with this. Black people can't be racist, which is, which is nonsense. Can't and be right? racist. We can, yeah. what? Hold it's on, hold impossible. on. Did you on the bandwagon do? Black people can't be racist. It's impossible. That's nonsense. It's That's impossible. Nonsense. Do you know what racism is? Yes, I do. <laughs> what you, you mean? Because if you knew what racism is, you would know that black people can't be racist. Hold on. Now, see, this is what this is what y'all doing. You, you, Chrissy, and Uncle is trying to spin this, and many, many other people. It ain't just y'all. <laughs> y'all is trying to spin this all the time. Because we, we all, we all have the internet. We can all Google what the word racist mean. And every time we have this discussion, I encourage people. We do all do an exercise. We all go to our phones or computers and we Google racist, right? What you guys are describing, y'all are talking about systemic racism. That's, That's a, a racist. No, no, no. That's a version. That's a version of what a racist is simply someone that believes that a different race is inferior to them. What's the foundation of racism, Greg? What's the is foundation? The, you is the me? foundation of racism economic? You tell me. No, actually, actually, listen, see again, and you, you spin it into another version no, of. No. I'm just asking you to put the foundation of racism because that's okay, important. That we have to know the foundation before we talk about what you, is you racism. You tell me what you believe the foundation of racism is. No, the but racism is capitalism. It's, it's white people using us for their benefit, for their economic privilege. That ain't paying you. That is. That it is ain't that, paying you. That's that is racism. That ain't, ra that ain't racism. That's what racism was. That's what racism, racism is. Racism is all about no, that's, power, control, and money. Correct. No, no, no. no. Black folk don't have. No, that is not true. Correct. Correct. That is, Frankie Wilson got plenty of money because I won't hear it. But that is, but that is, <laughs> I, I hear y'all, I hear y'all opinion, but that is just simply not the fact. That is okay. your feeling on it. That is an opinion. All now, right. like, again, we don't have to go back and forth because all of us have access to the internet and we could Google what racist means and you will see clearly what we it's. Don't the internet. We live it every day. Right. Again, I rather not go off of feeling, Chrissy. You know I don't row over emotion. I I I won't have fact, I won't have fact based discussions now. We could we we'll, we'll row we'll sit here and row all day and not get nothing accomplished. Why people get lynched? Let me the see. The fact the fact of the matter is, a racist is defined as someone that believes that there another race is inferior to their race. That's that is what a race. Definitions. That is what a racist is, and by that definition. Everyone is capable of being a racist. Except black, black people. people. Latin people, Indian people, whoever. Once you believe that your race is superior in some way, shape, or form to no. another race, you are racist. No. Let me set my black up. That's supremacy of the race. <laughs> Let me but that's, my black people, up. Black and brown people can't be racist. That is not true. But like, but let's get back to, to the topic. We'll, we'll say that. Chris, you know, we, we ain't never <laughs> not, we have this discussion all the time. We've been arguing about this for six years. Yes, we've been we've been rowing, but this long. <laughs> Damn. Like I, like I said, I ain't gonna keep rowing. The facts are right there. It's in black and white. You can I was on it. your side, Greg, with this one, but two years ago that changed. But I was on your side one time. <laughs> but like, hey, and like I like I say, I ain't looking for people to agree with me and be on my side. You know, that ain't got nothing to do. You I can feel how you want. Everybody have the right to feel how they want about whatever they want. I However, at the end of the day. I roll with the facts. You understand? That's what I roll in with. I ain't rolling with feeling. The we ain't gonna discuss feeling. We can discuss facts. But like, like, but Greg, huh? Remember, there was a there were people of the dominant culture who thought factually we were inferior. Factually, dominant. dominant. <laughs> See, and you know what? And you know I what? I say white people. Apparently, 
I'm telling you, my show yesterday, when I say white people, apparently that is upset people. I don't know why. But you know that's racist, you know right? Mm. So you know that that in itself is racist, you know. You are admitting that white people are superior to black people and everybody else. No, I'm not. You just <laughs> called white people the dominant culture. Because every what, is dominance, what does dominance mean? In context, yes. though. Dominance doesn't mean what superior. You, it, dominant, dominant culture in that everything that we look through has a prism of white, Caucasian, Eurocentric. It, it is seen through that prism. Again, this is the world, Greg. Like I, that's like fact. I, you, you could, could try. Like, you could try to dance world. around it, but you are admitting that is that is a racist no, remark in itself. Because you are racist. you are saying that white people are superior. No, they're not. They just have they been robbing, robbing from black and brown people long enough to dominate the culture. Right. You just you just describe it, but anyhow, people can we we put it on the table. The people will decide for themselves. So <laughs> what did Barry say, I want to see what Barry said about racists. But again, but like, okay, what are you saying? And this is what um and and Tej, and this is what our first disagreement was earlier. Um, Tej disagreed that um me using the word nigga and being upset at other people for using it is not hypocritical. And I said it's hypocritical because no, it isn't. see, see, and y'all okay. So again, y'all two for two. Y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it's like? It's like how it's like how when white people try to make potato salad. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> you know that there's certain things you shouldn't try because you have a deficiency. It's just you like are... I wouldn't try to make Venus schnitzel. <laughs> you're my favorite racist, you know. I'm not a racist. <laughs> that's I'm a like, realist. That's like you just—that's a racist remark. Like no, white people trying to, you trying to say that white people can't make some good potato very, salad. Very few, and I've had potato salad all over the world. I, I, hey, I, look at that. I ain't gonna lie. I, I know some niggas that can't make potato salad neither. So I, 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 that's a that that's a potato salad gene in our DNA though. The no, sir. no, sir. Well, plenty of people in Nassau ain't born with that gene. Cause look here, some potato salad without a taste. It's I mean. like the people ain't had no salt in their cabinet or nothing. I don't know what kind of potato salad that is. I might as well just pick it out the farm and bite the potato. No, that it. I probably would have. Greg, you ain't. No, but what I'm saying is that we have to realize that there are certain conventions in life that have been dictated over the, the, the time of history, okay? When black people were called nigger, when again, we were being whipped and beaten and- Thank you. And chained and- Brutalized. And victimized. Do you Castrated. realize how brutal the slavery of black people was? Do you realize how brutal that was? Right. And like I said, being in America, we didn't just stop at slavery. We have new slavery now. Jim Crow after that 13th Amendment, it goes on and on and on. We have people in the Bahamas who being slave slave owners and they look like us. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, right. So it's not about color. And again, but again, let me, uh, TH, I want you to, um, and I, I think I find somewhere where you guys may disagree because it seemed like you all just tag team in the day. You all, you all slapping each other. <laughs> right? Right, you know me long time. You know how I feel. But I think, I think there's a way that there's something you guys may disagree on and I want you to address it, TH. Chrissy said, she will say nigga till the day she dies. She ain't got a problem with it. Black people can say it all they want. White people just need to not say it. And that's how it need to be. But you said earlier that you're making an effort to stop saying it. And I think you leaning more towards nobody should be using this word. No. Tell us your position on that, teach. Yeah, my, my position on that is me Sorry. personally, as a black man, me personally, I don't want to use the term anymore. Um, I'm about to have a daughter in about a month and a half. Oh, I saw and so Congratulations. You know, Thank you. And so I'm trying to make some decisions um, for them. You know what I'm saying? And I, I want to teach them better. I want them to be better than I was. But at the same time, I, I don't have, I, I can't have a problem with somebody using the word nigga. Just like I told you that you shouldn't have a problem with using the word nigga. And I, th I told you that you shouldn't feel like you're a hypocrite. Well, as, as why, and remember I said earlier, I've been hearing some, because I, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I hear a lot of discussions, right? And I heard this recent um, position on the word and it really made me consider like well you know what maybe i should stop saying this word you know and it was basically can you imagine and like y'all just y'all just described the history of the word where it came from you were right. integrated you were beaten you were treated and put in the worst conditions and you were referred to as this word I'm and, okay. and this this is a word that white people use 
to just degrade you to nothing, right? <clears throat> they called you this, labeled you this for all, of the, for all of that time. And for you to turn around and call each other. Can you imagine somebody? Let me put forward the, the position and then you can tell me about it, right? And this would make right. me really think, like, you know what, for real. What if somebody, like, what, what, what do you consider the worst thing somebody could call you, Deej? I don't know. I don't care about what people call me. To, to be okay. Too much. Well, 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 you something like me. We don't care much about words. You know what right. I mean? We don't, words don't really move us. But for most people, let's say a uh, uh, stupid fool. Let's just use that just for using right. it. Nobody right. wants to call a stupid fool, right? What if so you, want- you imagine you go around call it? What'd you say, Chrissy? What if you are a stupid fool? <laughs> Hold on, Matt. <laughs> Let me get the point out, Matt. Okay. So, can you imagine? Let's say this person calls this other person a stupid fool. They hate it. Can't stand that this person is calling them a stupid fool. And they say, you know what? To combat this, I'm going to call myself a stupid fool. But not only am I going to call myself a stupid fool, I'm going to call my friends stupid fools. I'm going to call my relatives stupid fools. And can you imagine the pleasure? The person that first started calling you a stupid fool must get from hearing you refer to the very thing that you hated them calling you, not only to yourself, but to people close to you. Can you imagine the joy and the just, the victory that one must feel? What, what the hell are you, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> what are you talking about? Go ahead. You don't understand what I said just now. Yo, yes, no, I no, do. I understand what you no said. Victory. But what, what I'm so saying So why are you saying what I'm talking about? You you painted a picture as that like the word was the worst thing that they were doing to us back then, when it wasn't the word. It was actually the practice of taking away our freedom and having us work for free. And if we don't want to, we could be raped, we could be lynched, we could be castrated, um, be taken away from our families. They rip away our kids, and they cut off limbs. I mean, the brut the like the brutality attached to the to the term makes it extra offensive when white people say it. But when we say it, it doesn't bother us because the, the term itself didn't mean much back then. It, what meant most now, is I don't know. how they treat us. Now, hold on. I don't know if you could say that with such certainty, Deej. You can't say the term itself didn't mean much back then because you nor I existed back then, nor did we go through that time. So when we you're being lynched and your kids being raped and their buck breaking farms no, and all that, okay. you, the, wor- you, the worst thing is not nigger. The worst okay, thing somebody could call you is not nigger. You, I'm sorry. If, but if you speak to older black folk, especially in America, mm-hmm. and you hear them speak about their feelings about that word and why they don't use it and why they can't stand to hear black people use it, you right. hear the pain, you hear the impact, you hear the hurt, you hear all of that that's attached to that word. So you can to those people and say the word itself wasn't that bad. Clearly it's not. You listen to Oprah speak about the N-word. Listen mm-hmm. to black people in America that are older and went through some of it, not the slavery part, but a lot of the oppressive times where they're getting uh, uh, water holes from the police and dogs sicked on them and those racist, really racist times in the 60s, right. 60s in the United States. You let them speak about how they feel about the word. And you and I, I don't think that they would be saying the same thing that you are saying. You understand? You speaking from your perspective. That's your position on the word. Like I said earlier, you and I, we really don't care about what people say about put us. Put some perspective on it, though, Greg. Put some perspective. Put, your, put yourself, put yourself in, the, in their shoes. This, and imagine, I, I, imagine I, I, that somebody's I, I, holding you captive. And just yeah, imagine the worst thing they could do to you when you're held in captive. If words or no, actions. No, but nobody. It, though, Greg. No, but the argument, the argument here is not. Is it the worst thing that happened? See, that's what you you trying to you trying to bait and switch, right? You you changing it. No the narrative is not that the word was the worst thing. The narrative is that the word has impact on people and it made them feel a type of way. Not saying that it's the worst thing that they went through or the worst thing that happened, okay. but some people still have a lot of pain and hurt attached to that word. That that's is fair. The, you that's understand. Fair. But I, uh, how I feel is black people could feel however they want to feel about the word. We're entitled to that. that and that's my, that's my end all be all to that. They could, we could feel however we want to feel about the word. We are entitled to feel whatever. And, and the and, only and, white people who can use the word, here's another rule. Hold on. Attention, white people. The only time you could say the word nigga is if either your mama black or your daddy black and your mama or your daddy white. <laughs> you can't even be like a quarter 
That's the right. Rules. Right. You it's see the what I'm saying? There are rules in hell. There are rules everywhere. There are rules Don't everywhere, for real. And, and let me, like let me. White people who try sneaking in when they sing and rap. Black nigga, white nigga. What? what, what? <laughs> you can't sing that song. Let me ask right. you something. Because this, this, is, this is something I never understood, right? And this is why I feel um, uh, we, we as black people now, we've made many strides. I'm not taking anything from black people as a race, but we could have been a lot further if we don't, didn't grasp for such low-hanging fruit, right? You black people would hold on to this word. Like they would get passionate about this word, but not... Get passionate about the things that really matter. And this is what I think a lot, uh, Tej has been alluding to a lot. It's just a word. It's just a word. But the amount of anger that you see it and passion that it sparks and blood. Like Chrissy is fighting. Listen, this ours, this our word. Your it's a word they can't use. Us. Hold I on. Said, you cannot use it. So what does that mean? Not. Yeah. You are saying you are saying that you are the sole owner of this word, and people are not permitted to use it outside of your race. Is that not what you're saying? No. Wait, hold on. Wait. No. Why would you say that, Chrissy? No, no, no. You can't say the word. Greg, you're trying to confusinate me. You cannot say the word. I'm not claiming that the word is ours, per se. But there are certain things you can't do. Like, I can't go next door to Wayne's neighbor, who's Italian, and go, yo, my guinea, my wop. I can't right. say that. There's certain things you can't say. No, you could say it. And it's just there are repercussions. There are consequences for your actions. Anybody could say anything. But my thing is, but, but back to my point. My point is, I hear black people fight for the right to be the only people that can say this word more than they fight. <laughs> Listen, Chrissy, come on now. Let's, let's, not, let's not play crazy now. You see, you, you fighting right now. And I hear anytime this discussion comes up, you always going to have at least that one black person that fighting for exclusivity as to who could say this word. And I'm like, why don't we fight for... And I think, Teach, in the thread that you had, it was something about um, uh, fighting more for ec economic power or something. Like, but, it was something more substantive in terms of fighting for instead of this word. Like, because that's where racism is. But, but, but we won't fight for this word more than we fight for anything else. Because that's, that's what... what me. The, the, the word... The, yeah, I understand what you're saying, Greg, but they... They should not use that term. That's point blank. That's how I feel. I, I don't care about the word. Like, I'm not talking about this word with my friends when I'm hanging out with my friends. I'm only talking about this word to you. And I only brought it up on Facebook because a white guy brought it up on Facebook. And I, I just saw didn't that. see any black people interrupt. And so I took the time to interrupt. And mm -hmm. so that, that's the only reason why we're talking about this word. Where racism lies is in the economy. Where racism lies is in our pockets, in our wallets. Where racism lies is in the banks that are here set up, set, setting up shop in the country. That's mm -hmm. where racism lies. We know where racism it's is. It's systemic and endemic. Well, I wouldn't. We know where racism is. I wouldn't. Okay, there are, there are threads of racism in down there every aspect of, of life. You know what I mean? The world, Gregory, the world was built on white supremacy. Um, okay. <laughs> we, can we can live. Even in the black Bahamas. <laughs> How much bleach and cream selling at home and weave? <laughs> but again, see, what that, speaks, but what, that, what that speaks to is that is that is our psyche. Well, we've that been brainwashed. It is our mentality. We are doing these things to ourselves in a lot of regard because of our low self-esteem. Because super conditioning. We, because of super conditioning. Yes, and we have they, now... We have adopted this whole mentality that you share, and I'm saying we, not me uh, personally, but in general, it seems as though we have adopted these things and now start to believe that they are true. White is right. Lighter skin is right. Uh, straight hair with the weave is better. Uh, you know what I mean? We've, we've now started to convince ourselves that this is the way to go. This is the way to look. But that's a us problem. We have to deal with that. You understand? That's something we need to deal with. But more people Back. won't focus on, on, the word, on the word and who could say it and who can't say it. That, that's, that's nothing. You know what I mean? That's a, no, that's it's, it's, no that's guess what? White folk, sometimes we love our vanilla brothers and sisters, but a lot of times because of the white privilege and the Caucasian confidence, they sometimes step out of their lane. Caucasian confidence. Yeah. That's the first time I hear that and one. <laughs> and white privilege is a serious thing. And yeah. so it's up to us people 
who say we want to uplift the race and change how things are, it's up to us to school them and let them know that certain behaviors are unacceptable. Correct. Because a lot of times, maybe because of that ourselves. confidence, they don't they think it's okay. Well, maybe right. I think okay. See, my thing is right. I think you always have more control over yourself, your community, your people. So I'm not in too much into, listen, we need to school white people. We need to teach the white people on how they should treat. Listen, freak the white people. You understand? No, if, they I, come to your or, if, no, listen, what? if they come for you, you have to let them know. I'm not going into Albany and saying, you know, you can't sing that. Jay correct. Jay. Right. I don't give a fuck about them. <laughs> right. Lord, look at get hot when you talk about yourself. <laughs> No, but, but what I, the white woman said on my show yesterday, at least we're in struggling niggas. And wow. Like, now see, you now see my words. Now, now that, you use my words against me, white bitch. Now, now see, that's, and that's, see, and again, that's like we were speaking about earlier. Context is important and all It's important. Very you important. Can't say that. Intent of the impact. I can it say is important. Yeah. Uh -huh. ahead, white girl, white girl from New York can't say that. True. Well, I ain't gonna say She could say whatever she wants to say. Any, I listen, I'm, not, I'm a free speech advocate. I, I believe anybody could say whatever they want to say. My thing is, just know that there are consequences for these things. You have to be aware of the of your surroundings and know what impact what you say will have on your surroundings and what it could possibly lead to happening to you. Right? Anybody can say whatever they want. I I'll never be one to tell someone they can't say something. But there's a way to behave right. in the world. I may encourage yeah. you. To say, listen, maybe you shouldn't say this, or listen, or if someone try like say something disrespectful to me, I can say, listen, you can't be talking to me. You understand? I don't. You ain't talking to me like that. You know, like, but you could. People can say whatever they want to say. I ain't in the business of telling people what they can't say. I agree, please. please. But there are, there are there are consequences. And again, clearly, what she was saying and the way she was saying it was malicious. She was trying to insult. Words, I could talk about Bahamians till the cows come home. You can't talk about us. Right. You right. ain't one of us. No, I don't agree. Right. Now, see, hold on, hold on. Now, see, this is where we can disagree again. You can't <laughs> again. Call, I can call Bahamians struggling niggas. You can't insult us. You can't but insult us. You can't us. come to the Bahamas with your foreign white self and be and offensive. Call struggling niggas. You can do no that way. when you at your dinner party. Okay, but see, okay, right. see, but there's a difference. See, there's a difference between just straight up being offensive or making a true, a, 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 a true observation, right? So, for example, if somebody visits the Bahamas and the beach they go on, remember that time with the tourists with the recording the video out on the beach, where all the dirt on the beach and all of that stuff. Okay. If our beach is indeed dirty, and a foreigner exposes that we have a have dirty beaches, my thing is. I don't have a problem with that, and I don't see they it as a. Nigga? Did they say oh, struggling nigga? But I no no they didn't say struggling nigga. You could nigga, say but, right. Each is dirty. You could say that. Yeah, but then but what I'm saying you is, can't say, is you niggas are dirty. Bahamians don't want foreigners say nothing. No no no. Not a, that ain't the problem. No that ain't the problem. problem. Oh, okay, let me see y'all say see y'all see y'all tend to speak from y'all one perspective. I am telling you, I remember, no, I remember. <laughs> see no, that ain't all you could do. What you could do is. You could you could listen to other people. You could be uh, 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 um, be attentive and listen and pay attention to other people and how they feel, and you will gain different perspectives through conversation with others. So you can see things in different ways. Yeah. You could broaden you could broaden your perspective. You don't have to just have your insular perspective. You know that. But you my thing is, beach is dirty. But uh, but my thing is, you can't say that Bahamians don't have a problem with that. I saw Bahamians come for these people. Well, you know, yeah, they were raged. And they were just exposing things that are actually true. I but don't have a problem with exposing the truth. I, I, I just rather fix it. You can have them people everywhere, though, Greg. Right. Mm -hmm. No matter where you go, that ain't a big deal, Greg. I can no, go to Coney Island and say it dirty. Right, no, Coney but, Island is dirty. No, again, I agree. We all agree, right? We're in agreement that you can have that. And we don't have a problem with someone pointing out something that is true. But you have a large amount of Bahamians that don't want someone that's not from here to speak on anything that's wrong with the country simply because they aim from that they aim Bahamian. But again, it's context. Remember the Royal Bank man, Tim Wise, who said Bahamian is a shiftless, lazy, don't have an education, whatever. See, it remember that. But then you making how much millions of dollars Royal Bank of Canada off of Bahamians? You see, you got to look at 
the way it is said, what language is it couched in? And I think sometimes, you're right, Greg, we do get emotional about it. Now, like mm -hmm. I said, she could have made her recording and say the beach is dirty. But there's certain words you can't use when you describe in Bahamians. No, and that's what I, that was, and that was my point. There's a difference between being offensive, just straight up being offensive, and pointing out something that is actually true, that is a flaw or maybe wrong. There's, there's a difference, but a lot of people don't know the line. You know what I mean? Because yes. you, you could point out something that may be wrong, and they take it as they take offense to it. Who are you always looking for row, especially on social media? Exactly. Exactly. Right. Right. Cars and they look in the route. Exactly. You know, like the recent incident in South Africa where the lady went to jail for being racist. Um, mm -hmm. where she was coming out of car. I don't want you Kaffers, you know, you Kaffers uh, arresting me. You Kaffers can't talk to me. And you know, you know, Kaffer and, oh, and I'm going to for being racist. How? How? Hold on. What? Uh, you got to explain to me. She had said this, and the story was everywhere. I saw it on. Yeah. Uh, I saw it on the Daily Show. Um, mm -hmm. This part was everywhere, and basically she was arrested because of this berating of the policeman for 48 times saying Kaffir, 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 which is basically nigger in South yeah. Africa. Um, you know, again, you can you can do that, boo-boo. You can do that. It's so like the problem with an Irish person. You don't even walk out and go, these damn patties and mix, these damn, right. you know, I know every ethnic slur. You know where you are. I, I want to know how you know all this. How I you know all this? Well, I grew up <laughs> in the world. I remember my Italian friend. My Italian friend saying to his cousin that he was tired of his cousin who was a grape stomping guinea. See, he could have said that. I couldn't mm -hmm. say that. I have another friend who's Jewish, one time calling his aunt a fat kike bitch. See, I can't say that. Right. But he could say it. Well, you could, but then you, you, you could, but you may, you may expect some, some uh, uh, repercussions for saying it. You know what I mean? You... They right. And white folk. And again, the only thing I blame us black folk for. Is making all this good music with the word nigga in it. Uh -huh. Now I blame us for that. We make the beat too sweet. Right. <laughs> like Wayne would say, don't make don't take it sweet. They make the beat too sweet. And so these white folk believe they could sing along. Correct. Especially at the concerts. And look uh -huh. here. I just want to fight people. <laughs> Correct. I don't go to hip hop like, concerts for the same reason. You don't? I just was I, I don't. on MTV in the Bahamas. You and wouldn't see me. White churn was trying to sing uh -huh. Stop Drop. Uh -huh. Why you don't mm -hmm. go to hip hop concerts, man? I wouldn't if the hip hop concert in Nassau, Freeport, I'll go. If it's somewhere in Atlanta, maybe I'll go. But if it ain't nowhere where they have a, a black demographic, where they have a black population, I ain't going because I don't want to hear that. Yeah, I prefer not I control my environment. I prefer not to have that in my, my space, to be honest yeah, with you. Why people saying the word still bothers you to that degree, to where you don't want to even witness it. It does. I empathize. I empathize with my ancestors. I, I, I understand what it was for them. And so I, it does bother me when they say it. When you say it, it doesn't bother me. When you say it, we could give daps to each other. We could hug each other. It's all good. Context, Greg. That yes. happened in the Bahamas, Greg. Yeah, I can't get on board with that. I, I, like I say again, I don't care. I don't care about the color of the person's skin. The reality, boo. It's about the context for me. It's about how you use it. And I agree. You know. And, and, and I, think, I think to a certain degree, like, we got to be the change. You know what I mean? Like, we got to set the example. But at the same time, when we're talking to each other, <laughs> you know, um, I don't think I got to be strict. I don't think I should be correcting Chrissy for saying, you know, nigga, when we having casual conversation. I don't think that's my place. Well, I mean, if, if you truly had an issue with the word itself, I think it would be a place to correct anybody that says it around you or let at least... Let them know, and let me not say correct. Let them know that. Listen, I am not comfortable with this word. You know, I prefer if you know we we converse without you know using this term. You could say it in a respectful manner if you have a, if you have that much of an issue with the word. Yeah. The thing is, if you truly don't have an issue with the word, then I mean, I you you wouldn't have an issue with anybody saying it in the right context. You know what I mean? Except if you white. Well, see again, no. To Thank me, you. that. Yeah, you Thank you. Me. Thank let you. Me, let me sign it for you. And Thank you. If you white, you can't say Thank you. that. I need that ZNS woman for y'all. <laughs> no white people. Look, no W's can uh, say nigger. Well, uh, well, that's we we'll we'll differ on that one. We'll disagree on that one. But let's. I want to get into something before we uh before we head out. I want to touch on that's something. That already? Almost. Not yet, but go almost there. But I want to speak about something you spoke about earlier, and uh, um, I, I thought I had this thought the other day, and um, it's all about, like you mentioned, white supremacy earlier, right? And I think a lot of times 
we confuse systems with culture, right? So we refer to things like right now you have people will always refer to system as though it's, a, it's the boogeyman, right? So whenever there's a major issue, people will say, oh, it's the system mess up and the system got to change the system, 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 right? But in actuality, there may not be no actual black and white writing laws, policies, whatever that are actually either racist or, or discriminatory, but it's a culture. So for example, it may not say that this company prefers to hire white people or we don't hire black people. You won't see these things in black and white, but we live in a culture where racism is so uh, uh, endemic in a lot of situations. People don't even realize it and they act upon it because of the culture. So someone may hear, well, Shaquisha, they see the Shaquisha on the application. Don't they about Shaquisha. And they figure, oh, this is a black girl from the hood. I don't know if we do want this person in our company. So they'll overlook that application and go for Becky application. Because, okay, well, you know, she may be uh, white, probably from a suburban area, you know, probably is more, you know, we could deal with this person in the company, blah, blah, blah. When you hire Becky, she black, what you do? For me, that isn't so much <laughs> systemic, but that is more cultural. And I think we have a lot of cultural issues. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. We do have some systemic issues. Some systems are messed up. However, it's not all. It's not all. I think it's more so the culture that's messed up. We have some serious cultural issues. You're also okay. dumb. <laughs> okay. I said, you're so young, Greg. The system is entrenched. And we as black people keep it entrenched. Okay, Everything but, is coded. Everything but, is coded. But when, you, when you say that, now see again, and this is why I say it's like the boogeyman. Because you just say the system. Can you name me specifically, specific policies or laws that are racist? When I go into a bank, I come to the Bahamas, white man, empty suitcase, not a shit on my body. I am given the loan. I use your Bahamian land to get said loan. Let a black person try that shit. Hold on, hold on now. Again, right. And this is great. I'm glad you used that Facts. example. But this is a great example. Great example. Now, is that written down that yes. only, only white people can apply? Well, not only apply, but will be granted. It's policy, Greg. It's policy, Greg. It is written it's in, the, in your DNA. In your no, DNA. I need to see it. Now, all, now, teach. Now, listen to teach. I ain't saying that it doesn't exist. Remember now, I asked right. the question. Is that written down as a policy or law? If it is, please bring it to me and guess what we could do. Now we have this in black and white. We could take this and we could fight this because this is something tangible that we can put forward and fight against. It's right? In but white, just, not in but black just, and white. just referring to, say, the boogeyman, a.k.a. the system, is not good enough. I need some specific laid out, written down laws and policies that we can take action against. And I think that's why we don't get anywhere. It's because everybody just pointing to the boogeyman, which is the system. Milo Butler did that in the 60s when he laid in front of the bank. We have, we have always had people just yesterday. And I said to myself, this is so ironic that this white woman came on my show talking a shit on the 50th anniversary of the assassination. I'm okay. On Maya Angelou birthday, only because I was trying to stick that <laughs> out. And so the thing is, me, people have stood up to the system. They have bucked the system. And that comes with consequences. A lot of times it's death, isolation, mm -hmm. victimization. A lot of people, when you're speaking about the injustices, for example, why is it that right now in the Bahamas, and I know this ain't got nothing to do with niggas, except niggas need to stop killing each other, the woman whose son get killed through the door, find out the man on bail on social fucking media. The systems are whack. Right. But again, I, I, and like I said, I, I'm not saying that all systems are perfect. Like I said, I do None agree. I'm pretty sure we have some messed up systems, especially in the Bahamas. Jeez. Would you, would, you, would you say that our systems don't benefit the, the majority of the people here in the Bahamas, um, Bahamians? For sure, and, 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 and a lot of ways, right? yeah, in a lot of ways, a lot of them do. But what we what we need to do is we need to find these exact, like for example, um, I don't know if it's a written policy or not, but it it doesn't seem that a black Bahamian can own a bank. For some reason, it's they don't. Policy. They, they don't. Is that a policy or is that just? <laughs> we have to go through 
the hoops that a Bahamian has to go through. Do you remember the People's Penny Savings Bank? Again, you're all a little young. But back in the day, there's some black people, Jim Russell, um, Cleveland Enius, um, um, you know, a couple of black Bahamian men and one woman got together and tried to open this bank. The hoops that one must go through to form a commercial bank. So the laws are written down. The number men, Uncle Craig been trying right. to open a bank. Couple of them. How long? The damn late 90s. No, Uncle Craig broke in the 90s, in the 2000s. See, but that's my thing. Like, what? Okay. See, I I'm a solution based person, right? I I, I don't like to have discussions where people just row row and just have a feeling and emotion and oh they're trying to keep us down. Okay, let's identify the things that are preventing these things from happening because I know of a couple of number bosses that want to own a bank and I support them own a bank. I mean, shoot, we letting the foreigners come in and take all the money of the country and send it back to wherever they sending it to, and we ain't right. benefit. Us, they're giving us these predatory loans and just sucking all of the money out of the people. So right. I have no problem with people from here um, trying to benefit because I'm sure they would give lower uh, interest rates and these things and it'll empower well, people. We more. hope that. We hope. Yeah. Well, we hope. Yes, we hope. We hope. But the gaming industry got some things to answer to. The predatory industry as well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So only one can hope. You know what I mean? But at least let them be afforded the same opportunities that you afford to these foreigners that come in with a briefcase and, and a nice suit. Why you is gambling in the casino? Again, like, uh, now see, now that's direct. Now see, that is, now, now, now we talking. Right, why y'all can't gamble in the casino? But see, and th but, but again, this is, that is a direct law that is written down in black and white, complete discrimination right in front of your face. Many laws are written down, Greg. Every, yeah, yeah, it's a lot, Greg. It's, it's coded. A lot of okay. it's it's down. Down. Let's let's find them. Let's decode it. That's the only way we can fix it. You is the decode. To. That's the only way you could do it. Let's find them. Let's find them. Like that's you what I about. Somebody, you know, somebody who can interpret. You see, Greg, we live in an era where a lot of people here claim they could read and claim they could comprehend, and but they read in the King James version and can't comprehend that. You see what I'm saying? And so it, it's hard for them to comprehend basic law, basic policy. Sometimes, sometimes it has to be decoded. Sometimes you could put us in an inferior position through policy just by the way you code it because you know these people are not extremely literate. And we do that intentionally. We do that intentionally. The Bahamas government has been using our resources for their own benefit and them and their family and friends and fuck buddies for years. Why is it that we the people don't understand what these agreements mean from 1973 until now? Why is it that Correct. there's this veil of secrecy regarding the things that happen. And I ain't gotta lie, a lot of the, the, the fucking over behemoths, there's a white man at the helm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of black people at the helm too. No, so no one's getting a little cut. Yeah, they, they work in. <laughs> they workers. And we talked about this before, Chrissy, but they the ones signing off on it. They are the I'm ones Based on to the person that are, are coming in and, and trying to take all of the resources. They have to sign off on it. But the white man knows that he is respected and revered in the Bahamas. That's why he keeps coming. And let me, for all y'all white yeah. people, y'all don't take it personal, okay? This is just the reality of how things are. How these people could come in, and this ain't the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh time this has happened. You ain't got no money, but you a white man with a briefcase. You could use our land to get money from our banks. What here? Instead of you bringing money, but you know what? I can't fucking take it. <laughs> <laughs> Word. <laughs> but I agree. We, and we have seen that happen time and time again, and we're witnessing it right clear again in 20 when was that uh uh, uh crazy and Cheech, how you feel about that before you were you from grand bahama this whole oban uh uh, uh nonsense your thoughts on this whole because again the white band coming with the briefcase no money you would turn it down because they ain't had no money now they come back to minutes and minutes say you know what okay no uh Every time uh, done it. No, no assessment you know no money yeah, we could do that. And plus, we can't stop you if the environmental impact assessment comes back and something is wrong with it. We can't stop you all. How you feel about this bogus deal? I mean, should I say or like, do I have to say? So say. <laughs> I mean, for, for, for me, it's bullshit. You know, um, a lot of payments, a lot of ground payments here and grandma, my FNM supporters, so they just support whatever they throw to them. Um, that's the unfortunate part to that. For me, um, I don't think all um, the deal started bad. It's going to end bad. I can't see this being a good thing at all. 
So because you support the FNM, you just co-sign on this bullshit. Uh, mm-hmm. But this is but this is this is what happens when you keep people in a point of desperation. You know what I mean? You keep them sure. on the keep them desperate. So any and this is an example I like to give. Like Chris, you had this example before. Teach, and I know if you heard, but I know there was a comedian and he he talked about loving to date like poor girls from the hood because he could take them to a, a okay restaurant and they impressed that they got salt and pepper. <laughs> That's why yeah. he loved. And this is yeah. how these investors look at our, us as people and our politicians. We so impressed. They just come and they talk about the most basic things and we impress. Oh, yes, please. Well, you need but, me to say so. But to the people, to the people, Greg, I, I got to say, our politicians, they are, they are fraudulent like that Bob Marley shirt you can see in the straw market over here. They fraudulent <laughs> like that. For real. For real. Uh-huh. For real. <laughs> we have to call it for what it is. They fraudulent. You understand? Uh-huh. And I and I I don't think we call it for what it is. I don't think we call them fraudulent to their face. But I'm 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 very impressed with the way that um some of the journalists are handling the situation. Yes, me too. Um, I'm I'm, yeah, I'm I'm proud a little. Me too, me too. And I said that uh, when we addressed that, uh, I think it was last week as well. Yeah. I am I am also impressed with the way the media is handling it, scrutinizing. Yeah digging for every single detail that they can get because that's the only way we're going to be able to deal with it is we have to know about it. See, back in the day, they could do these things and nobody even knows. They don't have to explain nothing to nobody. They just go about their business and do whatever they want to do. Can you imagine the deals that they cut from back in the day when we didn't have this amount of transparency? And imagine. We see the deals. Man. We colonized, baby. (laughs) Exactly. Beach. We call it an eyes, baby. <laughs> exactly. Look at and that, we call it eyes. <laughs> and I think, and I think that's when, and again, um, uh, referring to one of the comments, I think that's what you were referring to, TH, in the post. Like these are the things we should really be focusing on. Is that's where racism is? Yeah. That affects us on an economic level. Right. These are the things we need to focus on instead of just uh, rowing about a word. You know what I mean? Words are words. Hey, they is wor- words are words, but certain people can't say certain words. <laughs> I know. That's where I am. I stand firm with that. <laughs> well, uh, like I say again, we'll just have to agree to disagree on that one. Listen, I, but I don't care. Listen, I, at this point in my life, and again, I ain't gonna lie, right? Let me be straight up honest. I won't lie, and it's because of the culture. When I hear a white person say it, I would be lying if I say that I don't feel anything. I you do. Want to come right in mouth. I no, I don't want to punch him up, but I have that odd, awkward kind of feeling like, hold on, is this okay? Did he just say like that? I, I have that feeling too, because it's conditioning. This is, you know, we've been conditioned that listen, y'all could say this word, y'all have this word. Why people ain't supposed to be saying this word? Yes. So I, when I hear it, I still have that little, you know, I have that feeling that's kind of awkward, like, hold on. You oh. still black, Greg, stay black. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time on a show as a joke, you know, I like to combine the funny with the social commentary. Uh, I think in the late 90s, I did because I had some friends who asked me this question, Chrissy, why can't we say this word? And I compiled a list of rap songs they were allowed to sing. And they thought I was being funny. And uh, one of the songs I remember, it was the Rough Riders anthem, right? And they were like, well, why can't I sing that song? I'm like, you don't, you can't sing that line, boo. Yeah. Niggas want to what? No, you can't say that. <laughs> and they were like, oh. and these were, you know, these were close. These were, I have some family members who are phenotypically. And I'm like, you can't say that. Mm-hmm. No, but I understand. That. No, I understand. I, I, and listen, I, I completely get, and this is me. And at this point in my life, I try to understand everyone's perspective and their position. That's the only way I think we get deal with any issues. You have to understand where people are coming from in the first place. So I understand your position, Chrissy. I understand your position, TH. I understand the, um, the white person that made the post that you had to in, uh, uh, um, intervene on. You know what I mean? I, I, I was reading that post like, you know that Kermit the Frog meme? Will you tell you that? <laughs> and I was like, backspace, backspace. <laughs> Can I ask you? Who were these brazen white people who said nigga in front of you? See, I have yet to meet a motherfucker. Right. I've, I've, right. Probably, I've, I've had a few um, that have said it. And it's, it's white bohemians. Not to me. They, as they, nice skin as I is, not to me. <laughs> okay. Not to me. I can't lie. See, and I get it because you grow up around. And like, again, like we stated at the beginning, in the Bahamas, it isn't the same as the United States when it, it comes to 
that word. The impact is not nowhere near the same. Right. In farmers as the United States. So I feel as though, you know, Bahamians, white Bahamians, black Bahamians grew up with this word as being thrown around, said so casually, and, and you're not really directly attached takes, to that. It so takes we, more of a masculine role, to be honest. It takes more of a masculine role? Yeah. Was, yeah, if you say nigga, people refer to a nigga like dude, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Bahamas. Right, yeah, yeah, for sure, and like, and like I said, like we said earlier, and it doesn't even, it, it, it's not based off of race or anything. It's just like you say, another dude, another man, another person. You know what I mean? Or an expression. You know what I mean? Like it's a versatile word. You can use it in many ways. It's a noun. It's a verb. It's a yeah, it, yeah. Yes, you can, verb. If you've yes. been, if you've been through, if you've been through, if you're 17, 18 years old, you've been through school, you shouldn't be using that word no more. I'm sorry, your days are using that word over. It has now to you, be. Oh. Now, when you say that, you mean black and white? You mean everybody? No, 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 no. I, I just, <laughs> I, <laughs> not, everybody. not everybody. <laughs> See, in school, they can get away with that. But when they get out here in the real world, especially with rubbing shoulders with people like me, they can't say that. It just, it can't happen. Not in front That's of me. That's like, ask Greg who these brazen white folk is. It can't it's happen. It, uh, it ain't happened in that long. I can tell you that. Oh, man. Y'all, y'all, I can't, I can't get down. Like I said, I, this is, Listen, I, I ain't too many more fair people you can meet than me. I try to be as fair. You as are. Fair. You are. <laughs> try to be, listen, I, don't, I ain't trying to lean to no side. I don't care what color you is. you right. My, I try to be as fair as possible. And in my fair mind, if I am throwing the word around loosely and you throw it around in the same context, in the same way that I use it, I don't have a problem. Now, as when as you using it, like you said, the home guys say struggling niggas, or you trying to really degrade somebody. I'm not for you degrading anybody with any word. It doesn't even have to be the N word. There are many words you can use, and I ain't for none of them. You know from, what I mean? So, from, a, from, from, a, from a white person, roll that neh off their tongue, it degrading. <laughs> <laughs> from, from, from it going neh. It degrading. It's already, it already but done. Suppose, it's done. Suppose it's he was going to say neck. It's done. It's, done. <laughs> it's done. It's already done. From this say neh, it's done. They might as well say it. But he can't call any boy his boy name. Nah, it's degrading from from this. From this that, that's not scare, because guess what? Let's not scare white folk. And you know the world is becoming more uh, multiracial and homogenous. Uh, by the year twenty twenty five in America, they say everybody can be brown. Uh, you know the thing is, I think that's too the reason why white people are so incensed in America is mm -hmm. because they see their majority leaving them. And when you're no longer the majority, you feel threatened. That is what happened in Charlottesville. That is what happens where people are just killing niggas. How you could shoot someone 20 times in their backyard? Mm. See, the thing is, we have to understand the history attached to these feelings and these words. Mm -hmm. like, Sometimes we, we make light of it. Because in the Bahamas, like you said, I told you my friend, when he said I was a white nigga, who don't? I was like, you was, okay then. So you know, right. we, we look at words are powerful. Mm -hmm. Words are, are are really of able to evoke a lot of emotion in you. Well, and yeah, in some circumstances, from my personal perspective, words are words. We give power to words. Words, nothing without yeah. power and credence that we give to them. So if we continue to give this amount of power to this word, then it would continue to be this issue and it would continue to have the power. But we have to understand that we control the amount of power that words have. They're just words. They're just a combination of letters thrown together on a piece of paper or said that comes out of a mouth. They're just words. It's so simple. I'll call you a coon. You'll be okay with that? I have, a I, I have no care in the world because what that person opinion of me has no bearing on my opinion of I me. I love that word. Say whatever they want to say about me. Who you? Who's you? Who you is? <laughs> like if I walk up to my white friend and say, "You cracker ass cracker," I nearly called that bitch a cracker yesterday at the camp. <laughs> I did that stuff. I nearly called her a saltine. I see, it's, a, it's a degree. It's a degree, and I'm not saying it's not. Uh, but there's a degree of insecurity when you take someone calling you something to heart. It means that you somehow believe them in some way, shape, or form. Because if it had, if it's not true or has no bearing, then you wouldn't care. You know, you sound like them people who go, "What's the saying? He who controls my anger controls me." Look here, you make me angry. I can tell you about your ass. Hey, listen, hey, someone, someone could say anything about you. The only thing that'll make it true Until is believe them. Greg, you so. 
Kumbaya, Lord, Kumbaya. Yeah, he's nice. He's great. Kumbaya, Lord, Only you believe in him. So I can Very care nice. what somebody say about me. If I don't if I don't believe it, they can say whatever they want to say. I don't I respect, care. I respect that, Greg. Okay. You know what? But if you put your hands on me, that's a different story. I respect you know, that, Greg. You touch me, we got a problem. But you can say whatever you want to say, man. I mean, I say it may Don't not. Break your bones. Yeah. But words no, can never harm you. Yeah, you touch me, stick and stone can break your bones. <laughs> that's what I said. You know. <laughs> but, but, but words are words. You know what I mean? It's just words. It's just some words people make up. They have meanings, but we give power to words. So it don't make sense. You know, a lot of people get in heated discussions, even come to blowers over, you know, talking about words. I mean, it's words. Come on, people. Let's, you know, let's be a bit more confident and more grown. We can have discussions about words. We, we give the power. We in control. We really have to, we really have to uh, um, start to believe that. And we'll see the change in these kind of discussions. Um, but we don't run, we don't run past the hour. Listen, this has been so fun. Thank you, Nadia. Greg, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Nadia, know the time, <laughs> <laughs> no man, hey, listen. I, I, hey, this, this is just called a degree of maturity. I am not the same person I was last year. I definitely ain't the same person I was five years ago, and I intend to grow with each day that I live on this earth. I, I intend to grow. That's just that's the way I live my life, and hopefully, more people adopt that mindset. We would have a much better planet. More people need to just you know have confidence and just you know take it day by day and grow, learn. You know what I mean? Don't be stuck in your ways. Always have room to expand. That's true. That's true. That's true. But once again, I just want to thank you. Teach, my brother. Always a pleasure. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Having you two on, like I say, y'all have been the, people, fun. Uh, uh, been the biggest impact as far as my media career. So I just want to once again say thank you to you both. This has been an honor and a pleasure, and we must do this once again at some yes. point. Uh, Teach, we got to talk with that marijuana uh, legalization again. We got to get into yeah. that discussion. With people yeah, today we, else. we can talk yeah. about that. Fine. Let me say this. You niggas can't handle legalization. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, <laughs> they, don't, they don't got the grid ready for it yet. Y'all ain't ready, boo. <laughs> the grid got to be on ball first. Stick with sneaking. <laughs> Leave don't it to Chris. Right back. Usage. Stick with compressing and mailing it. <laughs> oh, like how in D.C.? In D.C., you allowed to grow three marijuana plants in your house hey. before and three marijuana plants. Guess who moving to D.C. in September? Right next to the oregano. Who that is? You that? Ooh, watch that old bugle now. <laughs> your one dance. I know that's my favorite dance. <laughs> that's your one go to dance. <laughs> but thanks again, so nice. folks. Listen, I, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Listen, I do apologize. Look at y'all. See, I can put the comments up now, right? For yeah, some reason, I, gotta, I want to read. Teach happy delivery to you and me, India. Yes, yes. Thank you. Happy appreciate delivery. it. And welcome, welcome to fatherhood. Listen, my brother, your life is just beginning. Trust me. It can be life is Your bank account just in. <laughs> hey. <laughs> anyway. Lord, mister. When my man me in that. But people, I do apologize. Listen, I didn't know the program freak, up, freak out earlier. I wasn't able to put the comments up throughout the whole show, but now it's working. Um, and you know, this was a juicy discussion, so I couldn't read as uh, that much comments. But we do appreciate all of the comments that you guys have made. We appreciate you. We want you to keep them coming. Keep commenting. Make sure to go ahead and share the video. We appreciate all the support. Uh, if you can't, like, well, Chrissy is telling me, listen, we, we want money. Chrissy There's say, listen. Button. <laughs> donate is not donut it's donate uh, donate yes go under the rock.com if you got little something in your pocket and you want us to continue to do these shows and you want to support us and get some new equipment and you know do more bigger and better things then you know you could go ahead and hit the website and hit the donate button and give a little something but like i say if you don't i know things tough um uh, the, these people foreigners coming in and getting the politicians to sign off and take all the money out your pocket so it may be a little rough but you can contribute by sharing the video because what happens when you share it, more people see it. They see the numbers. They see all kind of people watching the show and that would bring on advertisers. They say, well, listen, we need to get our products on this show and we need to get some advertisements and they will pay to have it on. So that's a contribution as well. So go ahead and share. Visit GoUnderTheRug.com. Chrissy, where can they find you? You can find me every day between two and four on YouTube. I on the tubes. YouTube. On the tubes. Chrissy slash Chrissy Love Live to the world. Yeah, I Facebook was getting a little crowded. I had to plus look here in America. You could do big things with YouTube. Yes, uh, Teach. What? What? Uh, anything you want to plug or where they can find you or anything you're doing? Anything you want the people to know about? Nah, I'm moving in silence these days, bro. So I straight. I just, <laughs> Daddy. Just appreciate. I appreciate the well wishes and all that. I appreciate yes, the good sir. vibes and the good. You're energy. all so cute on Instagram. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. You know, so I hey, I always I always wanted to be a natural black woman like her. So and I'm oh. glad happy tears. You know me and you we used to talk. I glad yeah. you're happy, babe. You look so happy. I'm so Thank proud you. of you, little Teach. <laughs> Chrissy, stop it now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you got what you want. Uh, Teach, like I say, Appreciate all it. of us, you and the family. Kiss the baby, thank kiss you. the wife, kiss the whole family. Much thank love, you. much appreciation. And people, thank you for tuning in. Peace out. Peace.